Good morning, Hillsdale Church, and Merry Christmas. I trust as you ease into your Christmas morning that you, uh, you're, you've set aside time to have breakfast together with your family, to spend some time showing your great love, your appreciation for one another by, by giving gifts, and of course, remembering the real reason for Christmas, the ultimate gift, remembering Jesus Christ, given to us for our eternal good. This morning I'd like to just share a couple thoughts as part of your Christmas celebration with one another and they come out of the Christmas story themselves. Out of Luke chapter 2, I have always found it fascinating that uh, the shepherds were included in God's story, in his birth story, in the narrative. You know, the shepherds weren't related to Jesus or his parents in any way. They weren't important people. They, they, uh, they had no influence in their society, often overlooked. And yet God found it in his favor to include them in the story. And I just, I've always loved that fact that, that the story of Jesus being born is, is for all of us. It's for every person, no matter how significant or insignificant we may think we or, or anyone else is. The angels, God's highest created order, announced first to the shepherds. They were the first individuals to hear that the Messiah had been born. When they came to the shepherds, of course, as you know the story, the, the shepherds were terrified as the, the skies ripped open and this angel appeared to them with this announcement that God's child, that his son was being born, the Messiah that Israel had waited for for so long, that the shepherds weren't sure what to think. And, and there are two declarations that the angel makes to the shepherds in that moment. The first comes in verse 10, where, where they assure them that they're there not for malicious purposes, but for a wonderful, to de deliver a wonderful message. In fact, the, the angel says, I have good news for you that will, will bring great joy for all the people, for everyone on earth. This is, this is a wonderful announcement that I'm, I'm bringing to you. I have good news that will cause great joy. They were there to announce that, that God's Savior was, was coming to earth in the flesh. Because of Jesus, we can be reminded that we have nothing to fear or, or be anxious about. That, that we're able to, to truly have joy in every one of life's circumstances. You know, it's, it's easy to have joy and happiness when life is going good. Sometimes it may seem more difficult to experience joy when life is difficult or challenging, when it asks us to make sacrifices. But the Bible tells us we can have joy even in those situations. It covers all of our fears, all of our insecurities, our anxieties, any disappointments that we may experience, that we can still have joy. The, the angel's message to us, to the shepherds, was one of exceeding joy. The angels had a, another message that they wanted to offer the shepherds that morning as well. It was one of, of comfort or, or peace or assurance. You know, the angels brought news that offers peace, they said, on whom God, God finds favor. This expression, on whom God shows his goodwill or his good pleasure, is, is a really beautiful one that only appears a couple times in Scripture. The idea is that, that someone might see a, a favorable outcome, a, a good ending, and that it's, it's within reach, that it's just within grasp. And, and when an outcome like that, when you see the end of something, and you know that you're, you're almost there, it opens and, and kind of ignites something inside each of us that, that gives us a deep resolve to finish strong. It, it creates in us a desire to finish. I can remember years ago, I, I was running 
with a, a friend on a regular basis. We'd go out three or four or even five days a week and we'd go for these runs and and he always liked to start off really strong. In the first mile or two, it, it was like he was shot out of a can. I could barely keep up with him. I was breathing heavy and my lungs were on fire. I was just struggling to keep up with him. And then we'd settle into our run and we'd run a mile or two more and we'd kind of find a rhythm together and we'd, we'd be fine. And, and then we'd come to the end of our run and it didn't matter whether it was a three mile run or a five or six mile run. We'd get to the end and and my buddy had expended all of his energy. He had come out so fast that he, he was just struggling to, to finish. I, on the other hand, was a kind of runner that, that when I got close to the end, when I got within a mile of getting back home, I, I could smell blood in the water, so to speak. I, I couldn't wait to finish. And, and so I'd, I'd pick up the pace and I'd, I'd run a little quicker. And as I got closer, I increased the speed a little bit more until by the end, I was just running as hard as I could to, to finish and be done. You know, there was something that that came alive in me when I, I knew that I was almost there, that I was about to complete the task that I had set out to do. It, it compelled me to finish strong. Paul writes to the Thessalonian church in his second letter, chapter 1, verse 11, with this in mind, Paul says, we constantly pray for you, that our God may, may make you worthy of his calling, and that by his power, he may bring to fruition or, or fit to finish your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. Now, Paul says that, that God works in us to, to finish the job that he's started in us. The Bible tells us that from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, since Adam and Eve first sinned, God has been working to make things right with his people. With the birth of Jesus, that end was within sight. It was within grasp. It was coming so close. And the Bible, the Bible indicates in this conversation between the angels and the shepherds that that God's good favor, he could see the end in sight and it ignited in him a, a passion to, to show good favor on his people. Paul expressed joy and confidence, just like was offered to the shepherds here. Paul expressed that same joy and, and confidence or peace within reach that God was doing something in another church, the church of Philippi. He says, in all my prayers for you, I I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the, from the very first day until now. Being confident of this or being assured of this or, or having a, a sense of comfort in this that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion on the day until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, Paul understood God, God doesn't quit in the middle. He sees things through all the way to the end, and it gives great comfort and confidence and joy. This morning, as you celebrate Christmas together, I would encourage you to, to express joy with one another. Real joy. The, the kind that you see when a child opens that, that gift that they had been waiting for, that most desired toy or or element that they had hoped for for Christmas. May we, even as adults, express that kind of joy when it comes to God's salvation through Jesus. The other thing I would, I would hope happens for you as you celebrate Christmas and think about what Christ has done for you is that, that you would also embrace like a warm winter blanket or sweater, that you would embrace the comfort that comes in knowing that God is still working. He's still working in you. He's still working on each of us toward the ends that he sees for us. God has something beautiful in mind for you. He wants you to, to be like himself, to take on the character of his son, Jesus. And he's still doing that work. May you embrace that work, knowing that he'll see it through to completion, that it's within grasp. And he just continues to mold, he continues to shape, he continues even to discipline from time to time, that, 
that you would be exactly as he created you to be and that that might give you comfort and peace that you're becoming more like Christ with each of those lessons and circumstances and opportunities. Christmas morning, may you experience the joy of Jesus' salvation and the comfort that God continues to sanctify you to make you like himself. May you have comfort and joy this Christmas morning. Have a wonderful time with your family, with kids and parents and neighbors, any, anyone else that you may celebrate today with. We'll look forward. I hope you'll plan to join us tomorrow if you're not traveling for worship right here at the church. We'll be on at 9.30 and 11 to celebrate together that which God has done in us. And we'll, we'll be talking about one last characteristic or, or quality of the Christmas season as we wrap up our year-end series. Have a wonderful Christmas. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.